All right, folks, this is 338 Razorback reaction video part two. Roll those comments wherever they are at. Stay tuned. All right, folks, well, welcome back. This is part two of the 338 Razorback reaction video. Uh, I tell you what, you know, this is actually the first time I ever tried doing this. Uh, now the second. And if you guys like it, just leave a comment in the video uh, comment section below. Let me know if you want me to do more reaction videos. I've got several more planned. <laughs> a lot of these are going to be on my uh, uh, YouTube short videos. But there's some on the 8-6 blackout videos I'm going to do too. More so on maybe more educational. You know, I see a lot of folks uh, asking questions online and... And a lot of guys, you know, that are actually just getting into reloading are trying the 8-6 blackout, which, you know, depending on your skill level and your mechanical prowess, it can be done. But, man, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of challenges. All right, let's just get back to where we left off the other day. Just Snuggle, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> just Snuggle, I'm just getting started. Musky Freak 88 Madness. Why? Because we can Exactly, brother, because we can. It's a free country. Pre dawn death. That is so stupid. I can't believe this is a thing. Come on, pre dawn death. You've got 9.94 thousand subscribers. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, must vijajas agri. I'm not even going to try that name. Man, you must need one hell of a twist rate to stabilize something like that. Well, actually, in the 338 Razorback, I think it's only like one in, it's like one in six twists. So it's really not that fast, I mean, compared to like a 8.6 Blackout. And then Dermanor replied, I could be wrong, but I believe that he is using an 8.6 Blackout barrel, which in this case, the twist rate is a one in three. Well, actually, I got to correct you there, brother. It's a 338 Razorback barrel, which is a 10 millimeter auto neck down to 338 caliber. Nate Smith, nice. I appreciate that, Nate. Short and sweet. The melting pot. It looks like a torpedo, LOL. Well, you know, it's a good thing you commented that because uh, uh, Paul with uh, Maker Bullets, he actually was trying, obviously with his, uh, his Rex design, was to get the most weight in a subsonic bullet. Hence, the O-Jive on it is pretty much tor uh, torpedo type. You know, we're not looking for long-range, down-range uh, ballistics, we're actually just looking for weight. Trent Kies, thank you for doing this. Just got my upper in the mail today, sizing some up. Just happened to have some little gun as well. Only could find 285 ELD locally. Was looking to get some of these in 300 grain. All right, Trent. I think Trent was probably one of the first people to actually get a hold of Ron Williams to get an upper. Trent, I'm hoping you're having a good luck with this. In fact, uh, comment on the on this video if you see this and let me know how it's going experimental firearms where'd you get the upper from huh <laughs> funny you say that Ron Williams is where I got it from in fact uh hang on let me uh let me see if I can find you know this is probably a good time to actually uh, get Ron's name out there again let me find his number here I've got it real quick all right so Ron Williams his number is nine four one seven two nine two four five one that's nine four one seven two nine two four five one uh by the way ron unfortunately you know ron was uh right in the wrath of uh hurricane i uh ian and uh yeah so uh prayers hearts and prayers go out to ron i think uh he made it okay but i know a lot of the folks down there are still suffering so anyways hearts and prayers to those folks down in uh florida i think ron is just outside of fort myers so let's continue here derek Willette. They are possible AP rounds. I'm not sure that you can give some input. Uh, no, they're not AP rounds. Not at all. They're in fact the opposite. They're they're designed to expand. Benjai, nah, you need some you need speed for AP. Derek Willett. Oh, he comments again. Can you please help ID the 223 rounds on my channel if you have any idea on head stamps? It's the first video. Well, Derek, uh, I'm not sure. I'll have to check it out maybe sometime in the future. Paul Wyant, I would like to see this with a twist rate similar to the 8.6 Blackout. Well, you'd have to actually get a hold of Ron Williams and see if he, he would actually find it a 1 in 3 twist barrel. Uh, but I tell you what, you know what? On second thought, 
the because of the smaller case capacity of the 10 millimeter auto you're really not going to you know you really can't shoot that much bigger or longer of a bullet and therefore i think it would be kind of counterproductive to actually get a faster twist rate 338 razorback big sexy brown boy did you have a suppressor on that and where do i get these yes i did have my uh bowers group it's a verse 45 can however i'm actually going to reach out to diligent defense uh sometime today actually uh they make an all titanium uh, 338 uh caliber can which i'm pretty excited maybe we can do some work together triple seven again you can buy a suppressor at, at local gun stores he is shooting custom loads tone 13 this is the most confusing gun video I've ever seen, laughing my ass off. Uh, first, that goofy long bullet, when this man, Jay, shoots in the middle of his basement, and that round coming out of an AR. But, bro, what is happening? No hate, this is actually really cool. All right, Tone 13, there's a lot to digest there. Let's see what Peter's response was. It's a super heavy subsonic bullet coming out of a suppressed gun and going into ballistic gel. It is quite AF. And not going rifle fast. That little dude seems crazy, but he's a legit guy. Just a different kind of character for sure. He's like a hummingbird, and he does cool tests and demos. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> I think I'll take a hummingbird over Steve-O. Westman78, at Peter. Doesn't he know that I already did this with 300 blackout subs? Ah, uh, here you go again, Westman78. I remember you from the first video. Yes, I did. They do that with 300 blackout subs. However, the 338 is 100 grains heavier and develops a lot more kinetic energy 300 blackout. Technovision Drawing Studio. Damn. Yes, sir. Mattis. This is what. This is for when you have some random rifle projectiles and think, I wonder. Bleach. Bleach tie dye. If I can stuff it in this handgun cartridge? Question mark. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. B. The music with these giant. The, the music with these giant ass bullets. Skeleton emoji. Uh, let's see. Red Fang t Tabris. This is some serious wump. Yes, it is some serious wump. That one boy spills milk. That. Opens up like a banana. Yes, it does. The Tasteless Chef. How do you come up with such a huge bullet in such a small jacket? And like the flip side fishing guy asks, why? And like I always ask, why not? To Katang Iguana. But why? Just for fun? Question mark. Yes, sir. Just for fun. And for other things, too. Ryan Atkins, I was a sniper for 10 years. There's reason for that other than to kill. David Johnson, that's a good one. <laughs> Laughing and crying emoji. Scooter, Scooter, get real. <laughs> I am real, buddy. J Van, because why not? Ha <laughs> ha. Doc, what's up with the goofy ass music? Oh, come on, Doc. Don't you like music? Uh, Fjord Ren Rungard. Mm, that's, new, that's a new name to me. Dude. All that came to my mind, all that came to mind when you showed the round finish was, this is a fur furry's caliber. He just made a red rocket. Where can I buy eye bleach to unsee something like that? <laughs> oh, man, too funny. Realm thoughts. Second question, why didn't you show the, cr the crom or gel? Fook you. It's called a short. If it's included everything, it'd be too long. Yeah, that that that's part of it. The other part of it is I like to tease tease stuff like that. So I hook you and hopefully you watch a long video. G Zeke Woods, that expansion, J C Benja. Yeah, I'm I'm questioning that because that bullet has a solid nose. It would be it wouldn't pedal that clean. There's some light grooves on the jacket, but barely. You have to shoot a a bunch to get lucky with the clean pedal like that. Benji, Benji, Benji. I'm telling you, man. I'm going to start calling you Doubt, Doubting Benji. Subscribe to my channel. You know that I'm legit when it comes to shooting gel. White Belt 44. What dyes and barrel are you using? And Bullface. Maybe do an overview video. White Belt 44. Subscribe to my channel. There's a couple of 338 Razorback videos where I actually go into those details. Oh my gosh. Here's Benji again. I think he's, he's stalking me. Yeah, these shorts need longer examples. This is like the fifth 
Razorback short I've seen this week by different people. Little info. Seems like someone's on a marketing campaign. Benji, I think you're like into story mode now because I, as far as I know, I'm the only one that has a Razorback. Anthony Romo, what's wrong with that picture? Anthony, nothing's wrong with that picture. What's what's right with that picture is everything. Oh, here we go. Hey, I've been wanting to get to this comment because like there's a boatload of people commenting on this guy. And in fact, I think once I get through the nine through the ninety replies, we got to we got to cut this part two off. All right, here we go. Flip side fishing. Serious question, not being sarcastic. What is the purpose of a boat like that? Question mark. Just for and giggles. Okay, here we go. We're gonna start, people. Austin Amen. From the looks of it, it seems super inefficient and, and overall waste. Smooth potatoes expansion. See how he showed us the round? That would that would rip in half. Timothy Timothy Foley putting holes in wild boars. LOL. Indeed. In fact, my buddy down in Florida. Uh, his son actually shot a wild boar like under 100 yards with a similar style bullet and just destroyed it. Cornelius Hecklesmith, and actually, let me amend that last part. He shot it with an 8.6 blackout, but the same maker bullet design. Cornelius Hecklesmith, if they're crazy enough to think they can do it, they will in fact do it. That's right, buddy. Us crazy gun nuts. We'll think of everything, but I tell you what, we're always on the cutting edge of innovation. Because if, if there weren't folks like us, y'all be shooting your 222s, your 30 sixes, and your 12 gauge shotguns, and that would be it. I promise you. Stealth. If I had to guess, he's doing it for a sub gun with a suppressor, so it's stupidly quiet. Yep, you're guessing right. John Doble. I second this comment. Well, John, stick around. There's a lot of people answering, answering your question. Uh, let's see where we're at. Uh, Emmett Martin. It's for suppressed guns. It's subsonic, so it's quiet. But its mass is big, so it carries kinetic energy well. Very well spoken. Uh, radiation reactor. Theoretically get big bullet energy on target subsonic loads. That's right. Okay, show more replies. Here we go. i tell you what. This get long now. Uh, waxed. It makes it makes it harder to take out of the skin. <laughs> That's right. Commenting account. My uneducated uneducated guess is that if it's not for it and giggles, it's for inflicting as much pain and suffering as possible on a target. Which for some people, it's still it's and giggles. That's correct. Abdul Indian for revolution, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that you could say that. I, uh, Isaiah Kessens. They're designed for suppressors to make them even quieter due to the fact that they do not breach the sound barrier, avoiding the crack and boom of regular bullet. The reason why he looked for the, bot, the for the bloom on the bullet after the shot was to check the lethality of it because it operates at, lo at a lower speed. They're extremely quiet, which is why he's not wearing any ear protection. That's right. Ezekiel sound. So I'm a guess it's like a muzzle-loaded bullet and just leaving a gaping hole in the target. Well, yeah, I guess you could say that. Luis Romer, anti-personnel from range out of a suppressor rifle. Finally, thank you, Luis. Anti-personnel. Not anti-personal like that other guy the other day. Brian da Daly. Subsonic, so easily suppressed. Heavily, heavy bullet at subsonic, comparatively a 20 long rifle. A 40 grain goes about that speed. Quietly hunting pests, I would guess. Groundhog, squirrel, deer? I don't know. Well, yeah, 22 to 40 grains versus uh, uh, 338 at 275 grains or even 300 grains. And the big difference. Big difference. Uh, Sean Bailey, subsonic, low velocity, short cartridge, high impact, big ass bullet. Useful when wanting the, the suppre your suppressed rifle to be effectively chunking heavy lead at your target. Haven't shot before, I imagine trajectory to, to drop fast, so flat range would be an issue. Well, Sean, if you watch my 300-yard uh, video, not so much. But you had to know, you have to know, obviously, the drop. Free speech absolutist. I'm guessing a ton of stopping power with that not ton of recoil and very little noise being subsonic. Haas Adik. I second this. That looks like something that would drop off at 50 yards. Yes, it does drop off at 50 yards, but it is a subsonic.
All right, folks, so I'll tell you what. I've got to cut this video short. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this. I promise you there's going to be a part three. Anyways, oh, before I forget, support that Second Amendment. Find these on my merch store, my merchandise store, in the video description below. Help support the channel. Thank you, and I love you guys. Here's a 300 blackout, okay? Here's a 338 Razorback. Here's an 86 blackout. Now the eight, the 338 Razorback and the 86 blackout shoot the same 300 grain, 338 caliber Sierra Match King at around a thousand feet per second. 300 blackout shoots a 200 grain bullet at a thousand feet per second. So if you guys do simple math, obviously the 300 grain bullet at the same velocity is going to carry a lot more energy than the 200 grain bullet at the same velocity. So, you know, just to put your guys' fears to rest, the lowly 338 Razorback, it can deliver. All right, let's get to the comment section.